that's the best one. Okay, let's go. Hi, Steve Gilmore. This is the Gilmore Gang. Sorry for the little bit of a late start here. Uh, let's see, who have we got? We've got uh, from uh, salesforce.com, we have John Toshek. Hello. Okay, Steve. Do you need a little level from you, John? Testing. Hello, hello. Okay, that's good. Uh, from New York and Betaworks, we've got John Borthwick. Welcome, John. Hi, Steve. Excellent. Let me hear a little level from you. Just Hi, Steve. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Hi, Steve. All right, that's great. Uh, from uh, Half Moon Babe, we've got Robert Scoble. Hey, how are you doing? A little bit more level? Oh, just, uh, what, what, you want me to be louder? <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot, right, Robert? <laughs> it's, Scoble's too shy it's, these days. It's Friday afternoon. Okay, and uh, from uh, where, Palo Alto, Keith? It is just me. Yeah, Keith Tier. Welcome, Keith. Welcome to you, too. Okay, and you are a little light in terms of audio. Okay. So, um, I anything happening this week? Uh, raise your hands if you uh, if you bought uh, an iPad Mini. I hate to say it, but I caved. Excellent. Robert did not. No, Robert said he was going to, and then didn't. And I said I wasn't going to, then I did. <laughs> no, no, I have uh, two Nexus Seven tablets now. Uh, I have a recent i iPhone. I have a recent iPad, and I have a recent iMac. And my credit cards are maxed out. <laughs> so. Seems like your employer should be feeding you this stuff just well, to you know, keep you inspired. There's a limit to how many expense reports I can put <laughs> throw in before people go, uh, do you really need another tablet? <laughs> and so then that, you announce on the Gilmore Gang that you're giving them away. You know, no, that's a, no. Uh, what I, uh, I'm saving the expense report for the Project Glass because I saw that last week at the Google Zeitgeist conference and uh, I already have my order in and they're $1,500 for the developer version and uh, got to gotta keep the gadget budget you know, ready for that. Hey Robert, so I, I'm looking for an evangelist for Just On Me and I will double your expense budget and even make exceptions where there are new products and match your salary if you'll agree right now to join me and ch switch jobs. Whoa. Hmm. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll have to talk offline. Uh, I don't think so. Keith, you, you might not know, know his expense budget. You you know, <laughs> promising to double that yeah. expense budget could be, uh, you know, crippling to an economy well, such yeah. as California. I don't think Google could afford that. No, you know, <laughs> you be careful there, Keith. You might get in trouble. <laughs> so, uh, John Borthwick, have you got if any we're going down, If we're going down this path, I bet we could put Robert on Kickstarter. Probably. I, actually, I'm thinking about that for our book. So I'm working on a book about the age of context, which is starting to get more serious. So, um, Steve, what was the question? Uh, I'm just waiting for your video to catch up to your audio. Okay. Yeah, we'll just have to use the long shot. Is, um, that a, is that a bandwidth? Is that a bandwidth issue on my end? It probably yes. Why have you? I could switch networks. Uh, uh, it's okay right now. Let's let's continue. So. Okay. Um, so did I buy one? I didn't buy one. Um, I I may get one. Um, I was actually thinking of doing the Amazon trade-in thing, um, which I did with my previous iPad. It worked nicely. I I mean look, I I think that Apple is doing. Uh, they're doing extraordinary work, but they are, they're filling in, you know, every slot into the, um, uh, into the sort of the, what they think is the market for these tablets, and I just don't need um, every slot. So for me, it would probably be a trade where uh, I, I'm tempted to get one to trade my, that for my iPad and to use it as my primary tablet, because my iPad's just a little bit heavy. Yeah, I, that's uh, kind of the thinking that I'm going on. But of course, I really don't know until I actually use them both. Uh, and I've yeah, I'd love to touch the thing. I mean, it, um, it's uh, and I, I, you know, I, I'm very excited about the new iMac, right? 
I mean, I was, um, you know, when they threw that up, that looks like an, an amazing piece of hardware. And I wish I could have touched, right? I wish it was touch screen. So I was hoping that Schiller would, um, you know, do one more thing and uh, demonstrate that they flipped down. And it was finally the touchscreen version. You remember those uh, those patents from a long time ago that were I think on Gizmodo or somewhere where you know Apple had some patents where they flipped down the iMac and it turns into it flips OS and turns into a touchscreen surface. Um, but we're not there yet. Well, I think we are there. Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, computers are are dead and uh, tablets are alive. We're there. Yeah, but I think so. We're just well, yeah. you know. <laughs> I agree with you guys because I'm I'm way off in in the weeds with with uh, wearable computers and mobile computers, but uh, every time I fly, I see a lot of people using the Excel or PowerPoint on a laptop or that's running Windows something. Yeah, it's, entropy has set in. It's like they the same people fly American and United, you know. I'm, they can't I'm on help United, it. you know. I don't have my private jet yet, like uh, some of the people in our community have. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, work for Keith here. You can negotiate hard. You may be able to get that. Hey, you know, there's a new startup with the uh, uh, Uber private jet thing. Uh, that sounds. If, you throw that on the table, Keith, and we, we'll definitely uh, be uh, signing a deal by the end of the talk. There was a Wall Street Journal article that said private jets are uh, are pretty much dead. It's chartered specialty jets, the ones that are used by. Um, De the, the, in the journal, it was about Delta catering to the NBA, NFL, and yep. uh, they're basically. One third of the number of seats, but they're all you know made for seven foot, seven foot people, you know, like basketball players. Pretty, pretty amazing uh, that you could probably charter those things in the future. Uh, at the Google Zeitgeist conference, I was sitting with somebody who's starting a new ski resort with a bunch of rich people, and um, you know, so there, you, you're going to have the Uber, uh, whatever they call that jet, the Uber of j private jets, and then it's going to take you to the, your your uh, private ski resort, which is going to be like the I don't know, the ultimate ski resort for rich it people. Sounds like a combination of Westworld and Future World are developing quite rapidly. Something like that. This is why I didn't buy any uh, any Apple gear this this uh, week. I have to save up so I can keep up with these rich people. Yeah, but Westworld is a good so one. Because it's so interesting when rich people get together, isn't it? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, they do. Westworld rich people is the good one. Is it really that interesting? interesting? That's, I can understand why they'd want to do that. The, the rich people uh, that I hang out with, um, they might not be all that interesting, but they do drink better wine than I usually can afford. <laughs> 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 so, you know. Uh, so, what are we doing about, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I really don't want to talk about how interesting rich people are. Steve, can we go back to tablets? Yeah, go ahead. So, so um, you know, Apple's iPad numbers yesterday. Uh, can we talk about that for five minutes? Because I think that you know we we all believe that the era of um, uh, keyboard-based computing is going away, and that the Surface and other things like the iPad are going to dominate. But um, Surface but, is going to yeah, dominate. I'm just making sure that you're awake. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> but, um, um, so. The iPad numbers were disappointing, right? And so I, I'd love to get people's reaction to that. You know, I've got a point of view which has to do with the software side, but but I'd love to get people's point of view on that. Do you think that some of it was to do with anticipation of the mini slowing down sales? No. No. I. You think I, it's I, uh, it's structural that there's we've reached some kind of a tipping point? I think Keith. I think that the, I mean, the many rumors, you know, there's been many rumors for a long time, and they warmed up in the last you know, weeks running up to the announcement. Uh, and so I think that uh, the numbers are, the numbers predate that, I think. And so, I mean, the question that I have is I think that the iPad and the, these, uh, these iTablets are amazing devices. I just wonder if the software experiences on the on the devices are distinguishing the devices enough as uh, being valuable standalone devices. Like uh, so, I, I, and I think that specifically uh, the co the production versus consumption stuff. And so, I still think that there's a lot to be built in terms of things that create native, you know, experiences for these devices, where you really say, "I need one of those, and I need to use it." Right. And so I agree with I agree with you with you that um, the software is very primitive compared to where it needs to go, Pro probably even on consumption actually, because I think with TV 
uh, <coughs> when you think about all media types, it's still fairly primitive, even on consumption. But I wonder whether that would yet impact sales, because you would think there'd be enough buyers worldwide, even for the software experience today, to keep the growth curve pretty aggressive and up to the right. The, the prob there's several things that are hitting iPad sales. I, the phones are getting better. I'm not, you know, the, the iPhone 5, it, yeah. it cost me $1,000 almost to buy my iPhone 5. So, one, that took a lot of money out of my gadget budget because I, I wanted the latest phone. And a phone is still more important to me than a tablet. I, I don't care if I can carry a, a Nexus 7 in my pocket or a, a Mac mini, I, iPad mini in my pocket. I, I, a phone is still going to get carried more often with me than, the, than a tablet is. So the, phone to, the phones are out there. You know, Samsung's phones are, are getting uh, much better than they used to be. Uh, LG's phones are getting much better. And the iPhone 5 came out. That, that takes a lot of people's gadget money out. Then the, the, Note, the Samsung Note it came out, and the uh, Nexus 7 came out. And, you know, the fact that for the last two months, Steve has been talking about Nexus 7 so much uh, tells me that, there, that that has taken some attention away from iPad. I, um, you know, certainly in many people's homes, uh, Nexus 7 will serve the same same uh, spot that an iPad mini will and uh, it's going to be hard for consumers to understand why they should buy an iPad mini instead of a Nexus 7 and uh, and finally I, I think that you know we all knew that the iPad mini was coming so we were going to hold off and see what you know what was going to get announced and now that that's out we'll see how successful that is um, yeah so just to go over the notes there's a lot of new uh, you know, that uh, yeah, there's a, I just want to wrap time, that up. That's all. I, there's a lot of new competitors for our limited thousand dollar gadget budget in our pocket, and I I, I think that all those uh, competitors did have a, a retarding effect on uh, iPad sales. Interesting. Go ahead, John. Talk well, I was going to say that uh, it that kind of matches up with the the numbers where they had the iPhone. This is Q4. You know, their earnings just you know are recent. And Q4 had uh, you know 26 million sold versus 17 million before, and but iPads there's only like 26 percent growth, which is you know great for anybody except you know that everyone expected f uh, bigger a larger percentage of iPad growth, and and um, yeah I think there's you know there's another reason is that you know the the difference between iPad one, Gen one and Gen two was pretty fa fantastic, and iPad three to two was was you know pretty good, but then you know, then then I think people feel like they're pretty comfortable with that device, and and they're they're just waiting for something kind of revolutionary. Now this this new iPad that the the big the bigger one, um, kind of snuck in there, right? That was more of a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, so you know the the iPad numbers could could actually jump again, but I think you're right. People are buying the phones again, right? And and the, and I think the catalyst behind that is that the apps are getting more. Uh, they're improving on the phone itself, so they can, you can use those apps on the phone rather than go to a larger device. Now, in the er, in the earnings call, Cook said that education uh, is seasonal. That you know they tend to buy in June. Um, you know, you know, just so that they have all the devices in by the time the school year starts, um, and that that impacted the Q4 iPad sales, but I, that doesn't sound right to me. That that should have just kept on going on a kind of straight-ahead trajectory, meaning that there's competitive pressure on there, and that's why there's now you see the you know there's not just one seven-inch tablet out there. There's a ton, there's a ton of them, and Nexus just came is coming out with this Nexus 10 too, which is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, but who cares about the Nexus 10? I I I, I don't. I mean, well, Samsung has 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 been shown to be. Uh, not only a good copycat that gets in trouble with the law, but also a innovative. Uh, they're, they're an engineering company. They're doing th unique things. That that Galaxy Note is a pretty interesting device. For you know, I could see that in education. So if they're going to do, uh, Samsung's going to make the Nexus 10. So if they do this, um, you know, that's going to be a pretty interesting uh, you know use cases. Well, I you know my daughter, my 11 or almost 12 year old. Uh, saw a Nexus, not a Nexus, a uh, Samsung ad for a tablet that had uh, a 
forget what it was, but she was interested in it. It was a stylus and all this. As, as a pen, that's the note. You can, you, you know, you can take notes. You can do lots of things. I mean, it sounds like it's a flashback to the, you know, what Microsoft was doing ten years it, it ago. It is a flashback, but and it's not. Remember but the it, it, it's something more, right? It has like, you know, different things that you can do on it. Not so really. It's uh, it's it's interesting, especially if you're in a classroom or something like that. You know, you, you need to, you know, the the pen to stylus is not such a big. You mean dramatically it's interesting, like rich people are interested. I need what? Can you hear me? You know the thing. The thing to me, uh, the number that really matters is the number that was announced that ninety percent of all tablet-based web uh, page views are coming from iPads. Because I mean, I don't think iPad. Um, I don't that's think a, that's iPad a first owns mover ninety percent of the market in physical devices yet. So it, it implies that um, the use case is a little bit different. Well, that's an interesting point to bring up too. So uh, the Nexus clearly the seven clearly had some kind of impact on the on the landscape um, because we talk about it. I really like it. I mean, it's still you know now it's months old. You know, it's ancient. I still like it. And um, and when I saw only clips because I was at a show uh, and and not the Apple show, they they made it very clear that this new the iPad Mini was displaying web pages better than the Nexus. Right. That's an interesting, you know, philosophy where they're going away, kind of away from apps and the messaging a little bit, you know, but saying all, all the apps still work, but showing with a web browser and yeah, how much I think bigger that, that screen is, 50% larger. I think that's, that per, that's unique. I think they're attacking the, um, uh, the Nexus 7. I think that's what uh, the Mini is about. Uh, it's got more screen real estate. It's slightly bigger like it's an eight inch instead of a seven inch i don't know if it's going to fit in this pocket or not if it doesn't then uh, one of the advantages of the nexus 7 goes away and i've been like you john i've been enjoying the nexus 7 uh, ecosystem a lot uh, yeah uh, and particularly how it intersects with chrome i mean there's a dance that you can do to save uh web pages on uh um what, on, on the reading list on, on the Apple side and then turn around and uh, uh, be able to move it over so that you can have it on um, cross devices which I think ultimately is the model but interestingly uh, the reason that I bought the uh, uh, iPad mini is because I was I got an email on my phone uh, that said it was available and I went you know this is the iPhone 5 I went through the whole process uh, on my iPhone 5, it took about two minutes. You know, the the, the software was set up for it. Uh, they already knew what my credit card was, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, you know, quickly since the iPhone 5, uh, I flipped from maybe using uh, the uh, what's the name of it, the Nexus 7, uh, a good 70% of the time in terms of web pages. I flipped to uh, doing as much as I possibly can on the iPhone 5, and I'm looking forward to what I think this Mini is, which is essentially uh, a, a big iPhone 5. And I think that there's going to be a lot of people who buy that, particularly around Christmas time. Anybody? Scoble? Yeah, I'm I'm just bored with this whole industry right now. You know, the the surface com the Windows 8 computers are like a, a a strategy of copying Apple or being influenced by Apple and stopping the bleeding because they're noticing all the iPads show up on planes and around the world, and Apple is like, oh, we got to fill in this little uh, this little hole in our uh, product offering so that uh, you know the Nexus 7 doesn't or or worse of all, Amazon doesn't come in and take away. Uh, a lot of the iPad market share, and I'm just, there's I'm waiting for something big, I, you know, like the iPhone. Well, was. Amazon I, had earnings too, and they were, you know, disappointing. Um, so that that's a, yeah, that was I, interesting. I mean, if somebody I, wants to unpack that, how, not me. How many tablets can we buy? Amazon, I mean, one at a time. Stock is Keith. up today, and Apple's tanked uh, over the last month. A Apple's down a hundred dollars in a month, and Amazon keeps going up. You know, Google which is was totally down. weird to me, given their low margins and. Well, they make a loss. Google because was down 10% uh, in one day, uh, and Amazon is down. 
uh, yeah, the earnings uh, uh, expectations for Apple uh, may have been a little low. I, I didn't hear John Borthwick what your analysis was about why uh, that happened, but I have my own theory. You want to say what you think? You mean about the iPad? Yeah. Uh, I was actually asking you guys. I thought that it was a, that there's a software issue, which is sort of a long-term issue, um, about you know, really building software that uh, makes sense for this device. But I totally buy the other arguments I heard. I mean, I hadn't thought of the, um, the iPhone 5 issue, but I think that that's a big part of it, is that that device is just a pretty good device, and I can do most of the stuff I do on my iPad. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, a smaller iPad is probably going to be uh, successful in the market, as will be continue to be the next seven because of its price point. I think less right. so. The for other one, yeah, the other one, Steve, that we don't talk about on this call much, but I think is 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 uh, is needs some attention is the is the touch, right? I mean, the touch is, is and this a good device. What's the uh, touch? You know, there's data out there that I saw that um, the the iPod Touch. The, the thing without a phone. These, I, I, <laughs> right, the thing without a phone, which people in our, you know, our age group don't think of, but it's actually a. You think of the maxi pad, the mini pad, and the <laughs> iPod Touch. No, right? I don't think that's, of those. That's the suite, right? That's the they're, they're all in, and they're priced. And granted, the iPhone goes in there too, but the iPhone has its pricing issues to do with plans, um, and to do with your primary phone plan. Look, there's data out there that I've seen that suggests that 20 to 30 percent of people in the U.S. are buying smartphones and using Wi-Fi only. In other words, they're saying, fuck the, the carriers, I'm not going to use them for data. Um, I'm just going to use them for telephony and all my data is going to be over Wi-Fi. These are mostly kids. Last weekend I was in the Apple store, you know, before the iPad mini came out, every single brand, every single version of the iPod Touch was sold out. They got, I think, six of them, including the Red, uh, uh, the, um, the Pro 8's device. So, um, the money to AIDS device. Um, but that, that's so an interesting they, point because you, you look at companies like Skype or Tango, uh, uh, Haytel, uh, yeah. there's a lot of them, Voxer, who can really perform fully on the iPod touch platform for voice and video and, and conversation. Um, and we've always thought that ultimately Apple and Microsoft with Skype would want an over-the-top communications play as opposed to a through-the-carrier play. I always thought 700 megahertz spectrum would be part of that, but it's happening a lot slower than I imagined, and I wonder why that is. I wonder why we aren't, aren't all bailing on the carriers and going to these carrier-free platforms, given that you, you, you can kind of do it these days. Yeah, I think, right. that, uh, I think LTE, as Mark Benioff said in New York, uh, LTE is the new platform. Yeah, but Steve, Steve, that's if you're Bob Benioff or if you're us. That if you are Steve, no, it's not. I mean, I. It, if it, you're on a campus, dude, if you're on a yeah, campus, it, you get Wi-Fi the whole time. Why bother? My son, my son has a brand new I, iPad with LTE, and he he chewed through his data plan in the first month of being in, in college. Well, you you have to have a clue about how to use it. No, they watch porn a lot. I mean, come on. <laughs> One hour of a Skype Try that call same on the again. Say yes, they watch porn a lot. They watch porn. You're a lot. making my point. The, the you have to porn. know how to use it. Uh, porn okay. or the forks? <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I was on Gilmore Gang the, the, the first week I had my iPad for an hour and I chewed through two gigabytes of uh, of uh, data on on our Skype call and and Verizon cut me off. The kids can't afford to upgrade from the 20, 10 or 20 gigabyte plan. The kids are on Skype audio and uh, and, uh, and and Minecraft, which doesn't chew up a lot of, of, of the point is is that we are in the middle of the, the carriers I, I finally agree. getting their pound of flesh uh, back from the smartphones and back from Apple. At yeah. the point that that occurs, there's going to be uh, you know sort of an executive plan that you will be able to get, particularly a whole company will be able to do this, uh, which will build on top of the LTE, LTE network, subsidized by Wi-Fi in, you know, to say maybe 20 to 30 percent of the, of the data, particularly the video data. And this is going to become, uh, you know, what actually goes on. You know, it's, int it's interesting uh, that you 
bring up. I think LTE is is so so much better, but they but there's so many contractual obligations and you know Verizon switching from unlimited use to you know pay the family rates and you know or device rates. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but so one of the uh, people I was talking to at this uh, show last week or this week, whenever it was, was uh, talking about uh, SoftBank buying Sprint and saying that, well, they're going to pour a bunch of money into uh, you know, Sprint's LTE um, framework and, uh, and make that a lot better. Now, as somebody who is at a company who is decimated by SoftBank, I'm not sure that's exactly what's going to happen, but, it's, but the investment is going to be there, right? The investment in these in networks is just going to keep getting better and better. I agree. I think that uh, you know when when this transition is fully uh, absorbed by the carriers and by the technology companies, and then eventually by Hollywood, you're going to see subsidized LTE as being the framework for here on out. Yeah. And, you know, Wi-Fi is a huge pain in the ass. And <coughs> excuse me. No, that's true. I was at startup school on Saturday, and and. Uh, we had, uh, I don't know, a thousand people in a room uh, at Stanford, which has one of the best private networks in the world, and Wi-Fi wasn't working. And I turn on my LTE on my iPad, and, and CNET uh, begged to have access, and they filed all their stories through uh, my iPad, and it worked awesome. Um, they, they should pay for all your gadgets. <laughs> Hey, maybe there's a business model there. I'll charge. I'll <laughs> charge uh, twenty dollars per uh, megabyte. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But sublet your bandwidth. It's going to be a traded my... commodity. Yeah. So, um, so go ahead, uh, Robert. You know, uh, there's people in the chat room near is saying that uh, if Steve was alive, that the, that he would Steve Jobs was alive, he wouldn't have released the uh, the mini. I totally disagree. I, people still don't understand what Steve Jobs was always saying when he says I don't like something it, that just means Steve was the best salesperson in the world and he, he lived by the standard of sell what you got and if you don't have a mini make it sound like crap Re I remember when he told us that nobody's ever going to watch video on a phone because his phone couldn't do video so he said you know nobody wants to do watch a movie on yeah. a phone now everybody, I would sit in the airplanes and people have little stands for their for their uh, you know uh, Android phones or their iPhones and watch videos on their phones. So Steve Jobs isn't always signaling the right thing to the world. And then when he does have a phone that does video, he goes, "Look at how beautiful it is." You know, he would have done a Mac, uh, an iPad Mini, because he he knows that there's a use case for a book in your hand, which the iPad just doesn't serve very well. No, he, he, and, and he anyway, knew that, that these uh, seven-inch units one, one one time, time they, they, they were there you when, know, the he was, interesting when he was alive. Oh. And, uh, and yeah. he, but he said, Stop. they're not ready, so right. let's just reduce everything. I'm going to undercut everything so that, uh, uh, you know, that when we do, when Apple does come out with it, it will be a beautifully designed device that works with the whole Apple ecosystem. Okay. Just, Keith, just, what just, were you saying? I was, saying, I was saying that whole, you know, what would Steve do uh, way of thinking is kind of nuts. It reminds me of Karl Marx once said, I'm not a Marxist, because all of his followers started saying, well, Marx would do this or Marx would do that. And he kind of disowned them and said, well, in that case, I'm not a Marxist. And uh, I think Jobs would say, I'm, you know, I don't recognize these uh, ideas of what I would and wouldn't do, because the thing about him is he was very, he's very specific to the moment. And what he might do in any given moment depended, would depend on the set of variables that were true in that moment. And so there is no abstract Steve Jobs. There's yeah. only a specific I, Steve Jobs that can exist in time and space. I kind of half agree with that. I mean, I think he was much more calculating uh, than, uh, than the idea that he was in the moment would suggest. Uh, I think that he was calculating to, in the extent that he understood how to prepare markets so yeah. that when they got to the point where something that was absolutely not useful was suddenly extremely useful. I mean, this is what, you know, the, the Nexus 7 is really an enjoyable product. I'm sorry to bore you, Robert, with some more analysis about these uh, things that don't stick in your eye, uh, like the thing that you're waiting for. But uh, <laughs> the, what is it, the Google uh, gumdrops, what is it that you... Are waiting for your <laughs> text machine. 
<laughs> the project glass. Oh, thank you. Um, but Robert will make a spectacle of himself. So the Nexus <laughs> 7, <laughs> boom. You'll be here all week, right, John? <laughs> That's right. Um, but the, 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 you, once you use the Nexus 7 a lot, you start to get fatigue, first of all, uh, and you trend back toward the, uh, what's the name of the screen on the uh, iPad? Ret retina screen. Right, the retina screen. You start to sort of lay off uh, your cycles on that kind of a, a system. As John Borthwick suggested, the, <coughs> bless you, the, uh, uh, the iMac looks like it's going to be a terrific product because it's going to move people back to the desktop uh, in, in some numbers uh, as Apple attacks the, the PC. I thought it was fascinating that they are now 7% of the, uh, of the PC market according to uh, Apple's numbers. Uh, you know, they are becoming competitive across the landscape. So I think that what they're doing with uh, with the Mini is, is they're, they're basically saying, yeah, the uh, Nexus 7 uh, experience is an interesting one, and we can do it better. We can make it wider, not a lot wider, but wider, and we can so that the length of sentences starts to become more usable. If I'm reading a book, as I am, uh, Neil Young's book, uh, it starts to be... Uh, challenging when you try and resize the font in order to be able to take advantage of it. For a newspaper experience, uh, the Nexus 7 is superior because you can go to the New York Times uh, and basically uh, pick articles and then just basically bop through them in the browser because the length of the screen, the width of the screen, is better than on the iPhone where you have to use that sort of uh, reader software to push the story up to uh, iPhone level. So uh, we're, we're, we're approaching all of the sort of uh, edge conditions of these various devices. Uh, and uh, it seems to me that Apple has a really good handle on what is going to be uh, extremely useful and particularly as it moves into an enterprise context. So you know, I think that uh, the iPad Mini is going to be hugely popular in the enterprise because it's you know it's the perfect tool for sales, it's the perfect tool for social context, it's the perfect tool for a lot of what's going on here. Whereas these yeah. other devices have problems. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I think I, I was just going to say I met with a uh, an interesting company a couple of weeks back uh, who are building. Um, Building software and infrastructure for um, for salespeople going into pharmaceutical companies, and uh, to be able to uh, they go into pharmaceutical companies and they sell this for the salespeople of of drugs, and so the salespeople go into the doctor's office now and uh, show up with an iPad, and they can basically go through talk about a drug, um, talk about all of the research behind the drug. Uh, go through content, which I found fascinating. So they actually embed content, videos of um, media about the usage of the drug or surgery associated with the drug. Um, and they said to me that when they actually show media, sales of the drug go up by 30 or 40 percent. And so, um, and then matched with this is that you know the pharmaceutical company can both now they have a platform where there's a change in FDA um, you know, uh, requirement for some kind of um, notification on the drug, you know, the drug gives you diarrhea as well as nausea instead of just nausea, um, and they can update that all remotely, whereas they used to have to do this all through paper, and it cost them a lot of money, and it was very hard to manage, um, and the risk of them having a salesman going into the door, and, or going into a doctor and pitching the drug was very high. I asked them, I said to them, I said, of the big farmers you're working with, what percentage of them are iPad versus Android? They said 100% iPad. And so, which I found amazing, they, they've developed stuff for Android, but they said that uh, uh, the pharmaceutical companies are all buying through um, through iPad. Uh, so I think the mini is going to be huge in the enterprise. I'm hearing the same thing from my from the people who serve the enterprise as well, um, from across the uh, industry. I'm talking to um, Aaron Lavia, who runs Box tomorrow, tomorrow on stage. So I'm certainly going to ask him to. Uh, uh, tell me what he's seeing, and and what he predicts uh, will happen with Windows 8. Um, I, I, 
I still don't have a good read on Windows A. I, I was at Menlo Ventures yesterday asking their their top VCs what they think, and they're they're taking a wait and see attitude. Uh, they're not pushing their uh, their uh, entrepreneurs to develop for Windows 8. Um, they still think that right now iOS is the best platform to go out first. They're still following the Instagram model. In other words, build on iOS, uh, prove that your company has staying power, and then port to the other platforms as quickly as you can once you prove once you prove that you have staying power. Well, I also see there's another aspect to. You know, even in in the healthcare, is there's a lot of ads now for um, you know Kaiser Permanente is one of them. Uh, I've heard it from uh, Cigna, um, other ones, um, and also in the financial community, where they announce their mobile app and the mobile apps that they say that they're available, they always now say Android and Apple. It's uh, it's in that order, and that, that's a switch. It used to just say on your iPhone or yeah. on your uh, you know, on your Apple well, device or whatever. Now it's now it's the two together. John, John, and everybody I, knows. I think it's interesting. Everybody knows Android is outselling Apple about three to one right now, maybe even four to one. Uh, in in fact, Samsung alone is outselling Apple at three to one right now, uh, according to the latest numbers. So, um, yeah, but it's, frag it, it's fragmented. It's right, fragmented, so and say, well, the users know, aren't the same. You know. The, the dirty little secret of the industry is uh, that we never like to talk about because it makes us sound elitist. But uh, users are not the same. You know, having a having somebody who's willing to try a lot of apps and buy things, and and uh, I maybe a rich person <laughs> is going to be different for uh, marketers to deal with than uh, somebody who doesn't try apps. And like my my brother's girlfriend didn't even uh, have a data plan that could, you know, that was very good, so she would keep uh, her data off, and she wouldn't even try apps. Um, and even though we showed her how cool the apps was, and she had a, late, a, a, a bleeding edge Android phone, so it wasn't the phone's problem. It was that, that she was a kind of user that wasn't like me, that I'm willing to try anything, right? And that means I'm going to be easier to acquire for a startup, cheaper to acquire, then she will be. She will be very expensive for a, a Foursquare or a Facebook, well, she was on Facebook, but uh, a Yelp or a Foursquare to try to get them, get her to be a customer. There's yeah, but I think that's, that's changed uh, I think that's so much. I mean, my son's Android um, really has two He has markets. no money. He has no smartphone. Um, you waving to me? Yes, uh, be quiet, John. Uh, Keith is talking over you. Uh, Keith, okay. uh, I'll go ahead. Sorry, I'm 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 not hearing all the uh, conversation. So sometimes I'm speaking and I can't hear anything, and I can't put headphones in because I, I I'm not in a situation where I can. Um, and, and anyway, uh, the point I was going to make is that Android and um, Android and iPhone clearly have different demographics. Android has two. Uh, it's people like us who experiment uh, and particularly developers. Uh, but the biggest demographic is people with less money, because the phones are cheaper. Uh, and and uh, you know, iPhone does penetrate that market with the iPhone 4 that they can get for free on a two-year contract. Uh, I, iPhone clearly has the higher end of the demographic profile, uh, where people spend money. And if you look at the dollars flowing through each ecosystem, it's dramatically weighted towards Apple. Dramatically, I mean, yeah, like so ninety ten. Or even Keith, even ninety five five. Keith, it's not just it's not just money. It's uh, uh the the latest stats show that that uh, Apple users use the web browser and use mobile features, data features, at a much higher rate than Android users do. Right. I believe that. Um. Anyway, so uh, John Tashek, uh, did you get to say what you were trying to say at that last? Time? I don't recall what I was trying to say, so yes. Okay, good. Sorry, go ahead, Robert. Oh, Mo just said uh, Apple keeps pissing people off by del deleting a new cutting-edge product within seven months. All uh, a new iPad came out that um, is supposed to, supposedly going to make me feel bad because I bought a uh, brand new uh, nine hundred dollar iPad you know, what six months ago, seven months ago. I think that's bullshit, uh, and it, you know. 
this industry is moving faster and faster and faster. On the Android side, I see a new Android phone or device come out literally every three weeks. I mean, I, you know, last week, uh, uh, Vic and Dotra said he had two new phones in his pocket that he couldn't show me. And I, I'm not worried by that. I actually want the industry to go faster and bring more innovation to us. Um, I'm not unhappy at all with my iPad purchase. So. Plus, the iPad 4 isn't that much of a difference. It's a little faster. Okay, it's not a big deal. And it has the new, uh, the new um, connector, this stupid little connector, which means you have to buy all new power supplies, which sort of has me itching because uh, uh, I already have the iPhone 5 and I already have three of these power supplies. But I, I don't get people like that, you know? The, the, your, your device, when you buy a computing device, your device is obsolete the day you take it home. Get used to that. It's been that way for 20 years. You know, we used to have these discussions in the in the 1980s because somebody would buy a $5,000 computer and then, a, you know, six months later a new one would come out with twice the RAM or twice the speed. It's, uh, get used to it. The key to it is uh, can you do things you couldn't do before? If you can, then you can usually make money doing that and you can pay for the device. The device becomes the razor. And uh, you know the software of the razor blades. And yep. uh, going back to what Borthwick said, uh, you you don't think that there's software for this razor yet? Well, there's not very much software for the the Windows 8 computers yet. That's for sure. But somebody just said uh, on Facebook that oh, you could sell your old uh, iPad and then buy a new one. But that's great. But you have to set these up. And my time. Even if it's just uh, four hours of setting up a new new uh, device is is worth more than the utility I get out of ten percent faster device. So I I'm going to wait until it's dramatic. You know, well, there's a dramatic speed increase. Like the iPhone five, it was dramatic. Uh, that thing is going to use, and every time I pick up my wife's phone and try to use her old uh, her old iPhone four S, it, it's slow and small. It, it's crappy. It, it makes me feel constrained. So there, there's a dramatic shift there. That was worth it. But with the uh, iPhone 3 to iPhone 4, uh, no, uh, no. And I have this brand new iMac that I'm staring into, which I spent four grand on, and it's a beautiful machine. The new I iMac is a little faster and thinner. I don't need a computer, so I'm not going to go down that route. But I'm a little, I'm more jealous that the iMac that that dramatically than I am on the iPad. Um, but I, this is part of you buy a computer for two years and you live with the consequences therein. Okay, anything else that we want to talk about? A little bit about the uh, uh, the Surface. Uh, John Borthwick, what do you think? Has it got a prayer? John, can you hear me? I can't. You broke up there for a second, Steve. What was it? it does the Surface have a prayer? The surface of a prayer. You know, I still want to get my hands on one. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I mean, we. It's fun to talk about these things months before, but now they're actually coming out. I mean, you know, Microsoft opened their their store in um, in Times Square today, and so I want to go up there and take a look around. You know, I think that um, you know, it's Microsoft's now the underdog, and it's uh, it's kind of uh, you know, we need people innovating in the space. So. Um, you know, the idea uh, behind Surface is an interesting idea. You're breaking idea up, John. Somebody else sat on the call, I mean, you know, the, the, the pro uh, I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, I can switch Wi-Fi. Is that any better? No. Nope. Uh, I, I would be uh, more concerned about getting to uh, Home Depot and buying some plywood for your windows because there's a storm of the century aimed at uh, New York coming in on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I was distracted. What did you say, Robert? Oh, I was just joking with John that I, instead of going down to the Microsoft store and checking out the line, that maybe you should go buy some plywood for your windows because uh, the storm of the century is coming in Monday night. And it looks like it's aimed at, at uh, New York. It's uh, the, there's, uh, the Wall Street Journal said it's a 100-year storm. So it's going to be a pretty wild time in New York next week. OK. Uh, so 
I'm not buying a Surface because I just spent all my money on this Mini. You just gave out your phone number to everybody in the world, I think, Steve. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> Scobble survived it. I'm sure I will, too. The, you know, Steve, there's one person in the world who should definitely buy a Surface, and that's uh, somebody who cares about Microsoft Office and doesn't Palmer. care doesn't care about anything else and is going to uh, put their hand over their head and not look at an iPad sitting next to a uh, user next to them on a, a plane because the, uh, the better apps are going to be on iPad or on Android. That's the de it's not just the developers telling me that in my speeches that I've got given around the world and I gave another one last week in Ireland to a bunch of developers. Uh, they are not supporting Windows 8, and the people who are supporting Windows 8, like I had uh, dinner with a guy, one of the key guys at uh, Rovio who makes Angry Birds. He said, "Yeah, Microsoft paid us a crap load of money to make a Windows 8 app. We would never have done that if uh, they didn't pay for that." And Microsoft is not able to pay for every single app around the world to be uh, converted over to Windows 8. So th Microsoft has to hope that their engine, that, that their that that chicken and egg problem better start kicking in that people should be buying them in in droves so that developers go oh there's a nice market over there I don't know that one's showing up yet anybody else yeah I, I agree with that and I also think that if you're a developer and you take the money you're paying a huge price in terms of time and effort and you probably shouldn't take the money uh, even if they pay Imagine, imagine if Instagram got defocused by that Microsoft money, which probably for Instagram back in the early days might have been $50,000, and they had to deal with meetings with Microsoft and rethinking their app for the Windows platform. Would they have sold for a billion dollars? And every kid is, you know, wants to swing for the fence, and the VCs want to swing for the fence. They tell the, the uh, entrepreneurs, stay focused. Do one thing, prove it has market value, then go on and figure out how to clone that to the other platforms. And they don't care whether you choose Android or, or iOS right now, uh, but they want you to pick one platform, prove that it has market, market staying power. They still are trying to get you to go on iOS first because that has more market power today. But um, they clearly don't believe in Windows 8. I'm going to run the interview right after Gilmore Gang ends, and uh, uh, you guys can listen to what they say. Cool. Uh, John Tajak, what do you think? Uh, uh, is the Surface going to capsize? <laughs> um, well, I, there's, there's three things that they're competing with each other, and it's confusing the, the whole world. Um, one is they're launching it toward consumers by, by putting out RT first. And then the second is the interface itself on the Windows 8 that for formerly called Metro is confusing. And then the tablet itself seems to be kind of not a tablet, not a PC, which is confusing, especially to enterprise, which has been, um, you know, a mainstay of the Microsoft buyer. Um, so if they can get past that huge confluence of negative events, there's a possibility. Uh, I don't find myself gravitating toward a Surface at all, um, a tablet or anything. It just doesn't seem to be compellingly different from a hardware aspect, and it certainly doesn't have a software ecosystem that makes it attractive. On the Windows 8 side, you know, it's... You know, I don't. I don't know. It's just uh, Windows reimagined. You see a lot of ads out there. I just don't see. Um, oh, here's an example. My son saw the commercial because Windows 8 was a, uh, a sponsor of the World Series last night, and he goes, he said something like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> That's uh, he's he's nine. All right. It's just. I mean, it's just. I don't know. Shook what the heck is that? View, right? Because uh, he's a Windows user, right? I mean, he uses a, he uses everything, but you know, what the heck on a, is on a that PC, about? he uses Windows. He doesn't understand it. That's having, having said that, you know, my my kids were watching the World Series as well, and they saw that ad, and then nine and eleven, and they actually said, "Wow, that's cool to the to the touch UI," but the problem is the touch UI is only skin deep. It's a hybrid OS at the UI level. And you, you, you jump out of that touch UI very, very quickly. So they've got hybrid hardware, laptop versus tablet. They've got hybrid software, you know, Windows mode versus touch mode. And it, I agree with John. It's, it's very, very confusing. And 
you've got to believe they could do a better job of both if they just kept them separate. Well, I don't see it, it makes no sense for them to keep it separate. I mean, it's an obvious thing that they have to do in order to survive. And, you know, the numbers, I think Gardner projects 20% uh, penetration for, uh, for uh, tablet devices, Windows 8 tablet devices. And probably of that, uh, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but I think that will probably be largely surface. Uh, yeah, you know, Gartner has, to, has to say that because they're they're going based on the surveys from IT people, and and IT people say well, over the next year, what you know, you have a you know, what are you going to upgrade? Of course, ninety percent of what's in an enterprise now is going to be a Windows device, and they'll you know they'll probably you know twenty percent may not be that bad. I don't I don't know, but I I just don't see it. They, 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 if they would have done this right, they they should have bought BlackBerry and added Bez and the BlackBerry Enterprise server, so they have this full connection, not just ActiSync, but some kind of security device in the back end, shoring up the entire enterprise before they release the device to try to get consumers first. They should have just gone right after the enterprise. That's, what, that's where the, their sales are. Then they would have said something about Office and, and made it attractive to all, the, to all the customers, saying, buy Office, you get Surface uh, together, and this is what you can do, and this is a new collaboration. But they didn't do any of that. They, they failed in every every single thing that you know they should have done. They failed in that, and and so as an enterprise buyer, what are they supposed to do? You know they're, they're going to sit around and wait, which is why Gartner said they're going to skip a generation. They're going to skip eight and go to nine. But don't don't you think that within Microsoft there's got to be product people that are as clever as we are and knew this all along. So what is it in the corporate DNA that's blocking those product people from being able to do their best work? You look at, you look at, um, at the uh, Kinect or the Xbox, Microsoft is capable of letting people do good work. So some, something's blocking them here. Whatever well, it's the is. entropy of Windows, the entropy of Office. I mean, but I think that this, this will be, this will be the, the thing that triggers, you know, oh no, now we really have to, we, we, this was a good change you know, okay, we, we, we put out something, it's, it's pretty interesting to us as, as really controlled Windows user groups. Now, this is going to, it's going to be messed up, it's going to be confusing. Now we'll fix it. And that, that's going to create the change necessary inside of Microsoft. By then, will it be too late? I don't think so. I mean, I think it's going to be fine. But the, the fact is that these devices are all being reduced to devices and it's your ecosystem that matters the most and the ecosystem for all everything else is a blending of personal apps plus business apps plus useful apps like you know uber you know angry birds and you know whatever pages and microsoft only has one third of those that matter i think that what microsoft is really going to be uh, hurt by is their complete lack of uh, integration with the push notification network uh, I've noticed in the last couple of days since I've been sort of concentrating on trying to catch up uh, from traveling and trying to go back. First of all, reading lists on uh, iOS devices are fantastic because uh, I can use the iPhone to cherry pick uh, you know, things that come from late lamented technology like news.me and, uh, and other feeds of canonical importance. Uh, I can bump, dump it to the uh, reading list by holding down uh, the, the touch and then selecting reading lists in the middle. And then I can open it up on the uh, uh, United plane, which has no Wi-Fi. I can open it up on the, uh, 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 the iPad because it, it caches the actual page as opposed to just the URL. So there's, there's already this really interesting synergy that's uh, materializing w w across these devices, and uh, you know, by the way, uh, as Robert Scoble said, uh, on that plane, since they have no Wi-Fi, they didn't even. This was a new plane, so they didn't even have an entertainment system. Uh, uh -huh. There were about half the uh, people in the plane were watching movies on iPads. So uh, Apple is masterful at understanding that software sells hardware. And, and uh, to get the benefits you just described, Stephen, I think those benefits are pretty considerable. You do have to remain in a 100% Apple world. And so we all do. We buy their laptops. If we, if we want a laptop, we buy their iPads, we buy their phones. 
it is possible longer run that the, the lack of cross-platformness about that software opens up a space for new entrants, I think particularly of iCloud and PhotoStream, where you really need to be able to communicate with people outside of the Apple ecosystem. That could bite them in the butt, uh, but people have to go after that opportunity. But if they do, I think there's space there. Robert? I don't know. I'm just uh, chatting with people. I know. That's <laughs> why I, I, I asked you a question, and I figured you wouldn't have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so make up something. Uh, uh, what should I talk about? <laughs> I mean, you know, Microsoft is. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't have anything to say. So, don't you think that it's a bad thing that they don't have any kind of push notification environment? I. I yeah, I, the reason I'm excited about this uh, Google Glass is it's a permanent push notification in my eye, so I don't even have to pull my phone out to see the push notifications. Mm -hmm. And so you're reacting to, uh, you know, all software becomes a part of the, uh, the OS. You know, they become indistinguishable from each other. They become features of a larger software uh, experience over push. Push is the unification of all these different apps. So the fact that, you know, I mean, for the most part, a Android has kept up. I mean, first of all, it was stolen from Android originally by Apple. Uh, but uh, they've kept up in terms of this same model, and the depth of, of the Android application base is, is, you know, maybe two out of every three apps. Uh, certainly in the enterprise, it's uh, a little bit retarded by, uh, you know, security issues. But uh, that seems to be coming online pretty well. Microsoft has an op opportunity in the um, in the uh, enterprise space of uh, projecting into that, but they uh, I don't see any uh, evidence of that. Do you, John Toshek? I don't see any yet. No, I, I agree with you. So, uh, all right, let's uh, wind this one down. I'll, I'll start with John Borthwick. Uh, I mentioned the um, uh, the late lamented uh, news.me, which of course continues to work, uh, which is good. But uh, uh, there was a, an announcement by uh, your uh, CEO of, of that product, which is uh, one of your companies, uh, that you're going to uh, that the, that team has already been focused on uh, on Dig for quite a while. When are we going to see? Uh, uh, push notification starting to manifest itself on uh, on uh, the dig uh, iOS client so soon I hope um, you know the 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 dig iOS product uh, unlike news.me which was starting off on the fully sort of personalized experience uh, taking data from your social streams and then offering you a, uh, a personalized uh, news experience uh, sort of the the best things that are going through your news stream Got bitten by the Wi-Fi again. Next, um, did I freeze again? Yeah, just so the, the audio froze, which was more yeah. problematic. As long as the audio is working. So, um, the what we did last week, actually, what we did this week, it's just been a long week, is that we pulled the uh, iOS apps um, for News.me out of the store. The current app, if you have the app either um, iPad or, or iPhone, it continues to work. And importantly, the e email product is continuing to function and we'll keep um, supporting that for the foreseeable future. We're going to migrate some of this functionality over to DIG. Um, and, you know, I, I think that there's, there's, some, there, there's some social platform issues here. Uh, uh, you know, part of the reason that we had to pull the news.me um, uh, iOS app was that uh, we had to conform to the display guidelines and some things that Twitter changed in its API um, uh, guidelines. And it was just a it was a cost sort of you know do we want to spend the time doing that or do we want to invest our time in building uh, dig, you know. So the dig um, dig traffic and the dig product is going great, and you know, I'm very happy. Yes. Yeah, I, I. Are you still there? Yeah, I am. I'm not sure if you are, but the uh, uh, the thing that I wanted to sort of drill in on was that uh, I think uh, Twitter's making a mistake about push notification. 
uh, by not allowing uh, these kinds of streams from third parties uh, to be able to continue on the push notification bus. They're essentially uh, sort of doing a Microsoft in reverse and, and opting out of that marketplace. I think that that's right. I mean, you, you wrote, uh, you wrote the, the Twitter uh, Spring post, which I think captured uh, how this relates to both push notifications, but also to the app mention cloud. And uh, you know, I think that there's a uh, there's an openness to the Twitter platform um, that is going to be compromised here. That clearly, you know, they they've got business uh, uh, priorities which they're working through, and so you know we'll see how this unfolds. But I think that it was this space was more interesting six months ago than it looks like it's going to be in the next uh, couple of months at least. Um, you know, I think that the it's it's. If you look what Instagram is doing in the app mentioned space, Steve, is that I think that they're making, um, it's granted it's different and it's photo related and it's a different kind of experience, but I think that they are moving towards a more open architecture. Um, and, you know, I, I think that this, these ideas are too big to put in a box and uh, for them to uh, go away. I think that they are, as the title of your post suggested, uh, this stuff will, there'll be a resurgence. Yeah, I, just to uh, clarify what I think you just said, the uh, uh, Instagram is basically taking uh, at mentions and moving them across to their platform, uh, basically normalizing uh, the namespace. Uh, right. That ought to uh, remind uh, Keith Tier of something about namespaces. You know that it's an interesting thing because we've just we're doing the same in Just Me. We're we're basically ceding to Twitter the namespace that starts with the at sign to Google the namespace that starts with a plus. We are, we're having our own namespace. I won't tell you what it starts with in case someone steals it prior to our launch, but it's going to have a prefix. And I think the reason for doing that is that you want those namespaces to be portable across platforms. Um, and the easiest way to achieve that is just to respect the other guy's namespace. So uh, uh, what I'm trying to do here is to sort of close the loop between these boring devices that Robert Scoble can't stand anymore because he's uh, trying to save up for his eyeglasses, uh, and the at mention, uh, you know, communications uh, network that we have now, uh, that's starting to really manifest itself with on these uh, portable, very powerful devices. I, my my bet is is that at mentions and uh, likes and uh, I forget what the uh, chatter sharing experience is called, uh, which just came online. Likes with comments, which also just came online with chatter on these uh, iOS devices, uh, that we're going to start to see a lot of signal moving across and then being displayed and bubbled up in terms of uh, 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 what's the what's the word, John Tashek, uh, for bubbling up uh, information based on. Uh, Authority. Push filtering. What is it? Escalation? What, I'm no, sure. maybe relevance. Uh, I'm not sure what the, uh, you know, the uh, recommendations. That's what it is. The, oh, you mean in, uh, our, our name for it, yeah. Yeah. Right. But uh, I think that that's the beginning of solving this problem of having these multiple devices that, which you basically uh, navigate between. It's not the devices that are going to move anymore. It's going to be we move. And as we get into proximity with these devices, they're going to light up for us. It, it, Steve, one of the interesting things is that whereas the at namespace is owned by Twitter, the hashtag one really isn't. So you could, you could have multiple people-specific namespaces across different platforms with a common hashtag system that would allow a, a virtualization layer to come into place, which will be able to measure mentions across different across different platforms and track hashtags across different platforms. Good. Uh, Robert Scoble, some final thoughts? No. <laughs> John Tashek, some final thoughts? Oh, it's just a great time to, to, you know, even if Robert's bored, this is just so, there's so many things coming out at the same time. It's just, it's just amazing. It's, um, you know, this this industry is reinventing itself, 
and it's done at the device level, but the tap the tapping into the ecosystem of apps and cloud is just making everything just so uh, so much more interesting to me, especially in the enterprise, which typically has been slow to adopt, but now is increasing ever you know even more rapidly than ever thought possible. It's like you know it's just like taking the whole industry and shaking it up. I mean, this is I'm talking way bigger than Y2K, which was you know kind of a forced thing where it forced people into some kind of obscure positions. This is really, really important for the, for the uh, enterprise as they figure out that now that enterprises are not you know, locked in the closet, you know, sitting on top of halon gas, but they're out there in the world and, and their customers matter. It's really interesting. One more time, Robert. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Are you just completely stunned into into? Uh, no, I just uh, you know it, it is an exciting time to be alive. But I, I'm seeing a range of things that are coming next year, uh, and talking to the VCs and talking with uh, innovators. Uh, there's there's going to be a lot of stuff coming next year that's going to make this time seem pretty quaint. And I, I don't think that Microsoft is well positioned for the contextual age uh, the way uh, Android is because it's more open uh, and the way iOS is because they have the developers all hot and bothered. Um, you take those two things, you know, and the glasses are a metaphor for the contextual age. Uh, you know, our phones are going to get more, are going to get a lot smarter. Today's Siri is really stupid. It gives you the same answer that gives me, um, even though we're different people. And, and the internet knows that we're different people, right? The Facebook knows what music we like, knows what our politics are, knows what religion we are, knows our, our gender, knows our family structure, and, and on and on and on. And, and by the way, the internet, uh, it's not just Facebook, but you know, you talk to companies, advertising companies that are thinking about this. Uh, Siri can give a better answer once it gets into the contextual age. And th that's what's exciting me is uh, talking to the people who are working in the research labs uh, and coming out with some pers highly personalized stuff coming out next year. All right, I want to give John Borthwick uh, one uh, final shot, but I, I just want to comment on what you just said, Robert. Uh, on, I was uh, in a bit of a rush uh, in Orlando a couple days ago to get to the airport. Uh, I was thinking of typing something in, and then I remembered that my iPhone 5 has Siri. I said, uh, how do I get to MCO? And it came up. Uh, and there was a start button. I pushed the start button and it started telling me how to go where I was. It was, you know, the map application, the one that everybody thinks is so terrible. It was amazingly fantastic. Uh, at the same time, I had just finished doing a, we did a, a version of the gang uh, that we haven't published so far uh, where, uh, you know, we were challenged. I did it over LTE uh, from, uh, from Florida. Uh, John Toshek was uh, going to be on, but had to do something at, uh, at the time that this was running. He was coming in on a Nexus 7 with its camera. I mean, my point is that checkerboarding back and forth between the phone and these technologies, using Skype over an iPhone 5, using FaceTime, all of these technologies are now uh, a usable. They're usable not just on Wi-Fi, but they're usable on LTE, this has become a, just an incredible, uh, uh, it, it, we're not waiting for anything here right now. We're just trying to catch up and use the capabilities that we have in store. I know that uh, you have to jump, uh, Keith Tier, so I want to thank you. Can, yeah, just one thing before I do jump, though, but uh -huh. I think what you just said, Steve, is, is all of this really is being driven by human behavior, and, and human behavior, which is about communicating and learning. The, those are the two key things and the, the hardware that Apple has created and the software and that Android is and the software is really all about enabling existing behaviors and making them more productive and more enjoyable uh, and, 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 and uh, memorable and, and that's what's driving all of this it's human beings under the surface and the best 
the best software companies really just need to ask the question, what are people trying to do? And then give them a better or easier way of doing it. And I think everything, everything revolves around that. And that's why it's exciting, because it's turning the human race into being closer to what we actually want to be. Last comment, Sean Borthwick, please. You know, I'm just going to I'm going to say goodbye. I got to go. That was a great wrap up from Keith. Um, it was far more inspirational that I can come up with. Okay. Uh, Bye. Thanks to John Borthwick, uh, Robert Scoble. Thank you. John Toshek. John thank you. Toshek. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm. Uh, I want to thank, as usual, uh, and uh, eternally. Uh, Rob Jess and uh, Rackspace for their support on this show. Uh, I want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster. I want to thank Murray, who's hopefully going to text me uh, uh, so that I can get his uh, information so that we can talk over the weekend and try and solve this ground loop problem that was introduced by uh, changing out our electric box on the side of uh, the studio uh, earlier while I was away. I want to thank uh, John Toshek. Thank I you, already Steve. thanked you, didn't I? Yes. Um, and I want to thank our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. Uh, this has been a, a busy week for us, and uh, there are busy weeks in the, in the next few weeks, so I don't know what the frequency or the timing of the show is going to be, but now that we have this LTE framework, uh, we can start to move around uh, and be more flexible. So... Uh, It'll take some shakeout to get the uh, kinks out, but uh, we're on our way here. I want to thank everybody who showed up, and especially those who didn't. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.